What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and one of the things that I like to do every offseason before we really start trying to preview the teams for next year is I like to look back to the previous season and I like to look at how teams performed in one possession games because sometimes you can kind of figure out teams that were overrated or teams that were underrated and it's nice to have that information before you look ahead to the next season so we're going to look at how these teams did in the sec we're going to look at how they did in the one possession games that they played and and look at what could have been so what if if a team had won their one possession games uh, how what was their ceiling how, what could they have put possibly accomplished this year or what if they had lost all of those one possession games how bad could it have been uh, so it's just something interesting that we like to do uh, so we're going to go through and we'll do all the conferences, but we start here with the SEC. Looking back to 2020 in the SEC West, you can see here as we try to find some teams that were maybe overrated, maybe underrated uh, based off of those one possession games. Look at LSU. They were three and one in one possession games. If they had split those games, then it would have been a losing season for LSU in 2020. Uh, so you could say maybe they were overrated a little bit. Well, it turns out that LSU finished at the bottom of the SEC West in 2021. And look at Arkansas and Mississippi State. They were 1-3 and three in those one-possession games. So you can maybe say, hey, they were underrated a little bit in 2020. Both of those teams went up in the standings. So interesting there uh, as we see how this could possibly play out. Also, Texas A&M, 2-0. Maybe they were overrated. Look, they dropped in the standing. So uh, it's very interesting to look at these numbers. It doesn't always tell the full story, uh, but I think it did kind of play out this way in the SEC West. So let's look at 2021 and see if we can project maybe some of the teams that could be overrated or underrated heading into 2022. These are the standings, of course. Alabama won the SEC West, and you see Ole Miss, Arkansas. There's Arkansas and Mississippi State. They finished third and fourth, both teams that we thought based off of 2020 were maybe underrated at least based on the numbers and then there's Texas A&M and LSU they drop down towards the bottom of the SEC West very interesting stuff and like I said it doesn't always play out this way uh, but it did in the SEC West so how about the one possession games Alabama was four and one in one possession games they don't normally play five one possession games in one season and some of those games could have easily gone the other way and it could have been a much different season for Alabama. So maybe this team was, you could say, overrated. And look, they weren't overrated when it comes to the playoff, when it comes to the SEC Championship. This team had the potential, had the capability of being a top four team, no doubt about it. But they also struggled at times during the season. If you look at the entire season, they had issues. And yeah, they got them figured out at the end of the year, but it could have been a much different season for Alabama. Ole Miss was 2-0 and in one possession game, so they took care of business. And you see the teams that were the best in the one possession games, they finished at the top, Alabama and Ole Miss. Arkansas was 2-2 and in one possession games. Mississippi State was 2-3. and uh, Both teams better than they were last year, at least, or in 2022, or 2020, I should say. Texas A&M two and two, so they go from two and two, two and zero oh to two and two. Auburn one and three, maybe a team that was underrated. The only team we see really in the in the West that was underrated, and I think you could back that up. I mean, look at Alabama; they almost won that game. Uh, they kind of blew it against South Carolina, Mississippi State. Uh, so that's that's an interesting uh, number there with Auburn, and it's it's different as we look ahead to 2022, just because of the transfer portal. And these teams are going to look so different. But it's still interesting to look at these numbers. LSU was 3-3 three and three in one possession game. So they played a ton of those uh, one-score games in 2021. So if these teams had won all of their one possession games, well, Alabama would have been 12-0. and 0. Ole Miss still would have been 10-2. and 2. Arkansas could have been 10-2. and 2. Mississippi State and Texas A&M could have been 10-2. and 2. So you had potential there. Uh, for you know, a New Year Six Bowl for Arkansas, Mississippi State, and Texas A&M, if, if a few things go their way in those close games, Auburn could have been nine and three, and even LSU could have been nine and three. So you see the potential in the SEC West for some of these teams. I think it, it was the most competitive SEC West that we've had in a long, long time. Even though Alabama still was the clear winner, the clear favorite here, it didn't come down to to the wire or anything. It still was overall a really competitive year in this division. What if these teams had lost all of their one possession games? 
Alabama would have been seven and five, seven and five. That is just crazy. And it kind of goes back to what we did in the in the offseason last year with the best and worst case scenarios. If you watch my video on that, Alabama had a they had a pretty bad worst case scenario, and, and it was much lower than a team like Georgia just because of their schedule. And there was just a lot of potential games that could trip them up. And, and you saw those games, they didn't trip them up, but they did slow them down, and they were closer than a lot of people expected. And they would have, again, gone seven and five if they lose those games. Nice to have Bryce Young, though, to close out those big ones. Ole Miss would have been eight and four if they lost all their one possession games. Arkansas, six and six. Mississippi State, five and seven. AM, six and six. Auburn, five and seven. And LSU would have been a three and nine. So you look at the biggest swing. LSU season could have gone from nine and three all the way to three and nine based off of those one score games, but they split it right down the middle at six and six. So if these other teams, all the teams split the, the one score games, what would their record have been? And sometimes this can really tell us what the standings should have looked like based off just how good the teams were. Again, it doesn't tell the whole story. This is just something fun to look at these numbers. But it would have put Alabama still at number one. They would have been nine and nine and a half and two and a half. So nine and three, ten and two, right in the middle of that. Uh, just ahead of Ole Miss at nine and three. Arkansas would have been eight and four. Now here's a flip. Mississippi State seven and a half wins. A and M eight wins so if you look at this texas a&m really would have finished ahead of mississippi state if they had split their one score games of course you can't win a half of a game or lose a half of a game but uh, it's still if you just go with the averages here a&m would have been a little bit better than mississippi state i think most people would say that overall mississippi state uh, was not as good as texas a&m i know they beat them head to head but if you look at the entire season uh, I think most people would say A&M probably the better teams, but they were they were close. And Auburn's right there at seven and five, right behind them, and LSU at six and six. So the standings really wouldn't have changed much. Uh, you would just have a flip with Mississippi State and Texas A&M. So the season went about how it should have gone. But you can see here how uh, some of these teams were were close to having an, a much better season and a much worse season. And we're talking about the overrated and the underrated teams. The overrated teams are going to be maybe Alabama and Ole Miss. Do we look at that potentially heading into 2022? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, but it's interesting. And Auburn underrated at 1-3. and three. We'll see if Auburn could possibly make a big jump in 2022 like Arkansas and Mississippi State did from 2020 to 2021. If you look back at 2020 in the SEC East, and you look at which teams are maybe overrated or underrated at the end of that year. Florida was 0-2 in one-score games. Could have been 10-0. Uh, so perhaps that team was underrated that year. It didn't exactly show this season, but it was just a crazy year uh, for Florida. Uh, at times, they looked like a really good team early on, but they just they lost the locker room, of course. That's a, a different story. Missouri 3-0. Maybe they were overrated. I think that you could you could make a case there that yes, Missouri was overrated a little bit. Vanderbilt were they underrated? Well, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt is Vanderbilt. I mean, they were 0-3 in one score games, but nobody expected them to really uh, win any SEC games this year. Fast forward to 2021, and this is how it looked in the SEC East. Georgia, of course, finishing 12-0. Then Kentucky, Tennessee. Three-way tie, which just is overall records, not conference records. But Missouri, South Carolina, and Florida all tied at 6-6 six and six in the overall uh, records. I think the conference records weren't exactly the same on those three teams. Anyways, Vanderbilt 2-10. and 10. So those are the records in the SEC East. Let's see how these teams did in one-score games. Georgia, they were 1-0 and oh in one-score games. And their only one-possession game was that first game of the season against Clemson. That seems like a long time ago, but that was it. Everyone else, they blew out. Kentucky, four and one in one score game. So perhaps Kentucky was overrated a little bit this year. I mean, that's not what it looked like in their bowl game, uh, but still, maybe Iowa was overrated too. So that's that's a different story. But yeah, Kentucky, four and one, maybe a reason. Maybe we're overrating them a little bit coming into this year. Maybe I personally am. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Tennessee, one and two. Missouri, two and two. So after having a great year in those one score games this year, two and two. South Carolina, three and two. Florida, one and four. Florida cannot win the one score games. 0 and two in 2020, one and four in 2021. If they can just find a way to win those games, perhaps Florida is a team that could really explode and surprise some people 
in 2022. Very interesting. Uh, Vanderbilt two and one in one score games. Uh, they most of their games, of course, were blowout losses. The two wins that they had there. Uh, in the one-score games were their only two wins. So how about if these teams won all of their one-possession games? Georgia still would have been 12-0. Uh, you look at Kentucky, they could have been 10-2. and So they could have been 10-2 and this year and probably a top-15 team, maybe a top-10 team, who knows. Uh, Tennessee could have been 9-3. and Missouri and South Carolina could have been 8-4. and But look at Florida. Look at Florida there. If they had won their one-score games, including a game against Alabama, this team could have been 10-2 this year. It could have been a totally different season. Dan Mullen would still be there, of course, and this team would have been right there in a New Year's Six Bowl again. So that just shows you how one-score games, how just a couple of plays, a couple of breaks can completely change a season. Vanderbilt uh, would have been 3-9 and nine if they had won all of their one-score games. Uh, because they did lose one one-score game. I think that might have been Missouri or South Carolina. I can't remember now. But how about if they lost all of their one-possession games? Georgia, worst-case scenario, would have been 11-1. and one. Uh, Kentucky would have been 5-7. and seven. That is a pretty big drop all the way from 9-3 and three to 5-7. and seven. Tennessee, that would have been 6-6. Six and six. Missouri could have been 4-8. and eight. South Carolina could have been 3-9. and nine. Florida could have been even worse at 5-7. And, and Vanderbilt could have been 0-12 because their, own, their wins, their two wins, their only wins were one-score games. They're, they didn't blow anyone out. And so they could have been 0-12. Very interesting to look at this, though. And uh, I, still, I still go back to Florida there. 1-4 and four in the one-score games. Complete opposite of Kentucky, who was 4-1 and one in one-score games. What if... Florida had beaten Kentucky. Would those two teams, would their would their seasons have gone on a different trajectory? Would they have flipped? Maybe Florida finishes really strong. Maybe Kentucky doesn't. Who knows? And it, you can say, well, it's just one game. Well, sometimes one game can change everything. So how about if teams split all of their one-score games? Georgia would would have been 11 and 11 and a half and a half again. I mean, you can't do that. Obviously, you can't have a half a game. Uh, but that was kind of the projection for Georgia coming into the season when we do our projected records. You know, I had had Georgia there, and I said, "Look, they're going to win 11 games. It's it's pretty clear. The Clemson game's a toss-up game. It could go either way. So that was their projection was 11 and a half and five and point five, and uh, it turned out that way that that was their only close game. But they won it, and that's what got them to 12 and 0. Kentucky would have been seven and a half and three and a half. Same thing for Tennessee. These two teams would have the same record." But look at Florida down there at the bottom, near the bottom, seven and a half and three and a half. So they would have been in that same spot with Kentucky and Tennessee. Missouri would have been six and six. South Carolina five and a half and six and a half. So if you look at this overall, Florida would have finished ahead of Missouri and South Carolina. And I think if you look at the big picture, you look at the entire season, most people would say that Florida was a better team than Missouri and South Carolina. Maybe not when they played, and that's why they lost. But if you look at the entire season and you look at this team and how good they were, I still would say Florida was a better team than Missouri and South Carolina. Overall, again, second half of the year, they were not better than Missouri and South Carolina. They were terrible uh, because, like I said earlier, they just they, they, Dan Mullen lost the locker room and this team kind of gave up. Uh, Vanderbilt would have been one and a half and ten and a half, so it wouldn't really change much. So when you look at the big picture here in the SEC East, which teams were overrated, which teams were underrated, what can that tell us about 2022? Well, it would tell us that Kentucky potentially is not as good as we think, and Kentucky is not going to be a team that, that gets to 10 wins this year like maybe some of us are expecting them to do. Again, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it, it could play out that way, and it could be Florida. Florida could be the surprise team, and I know it, it's Florida's a name brand, and so you don't really think of them as a, a surprise team, but if you look at a turnaround Maybe Florida has the biggest turnaround in the SEC East. don't think that they're going to have a chance to really win this division, but they could possibly get up to number two. And it's interesting that if you look at the SEC West and the SEC East, one of our most overrated teams was Alabama. Underrated was Florida. Of course, Alabama finished much, much higher than Florida. But when they played... They played a close game, so perhaps there is something uh, to these numbers. But, again, that's what it looks like in the SEC East. What do you guys think? Do you think that uh, perhaps this tells us anything going into next year? 
or maybe it tells us nothing. And again, go back to 2020, I think you could take some things away from that, and we'll see if we can do the same thing uh, once the 2022 season is over when we look back at those one-score games. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.